morning, Friendship family. We thank you for joining Friendship Baptist Church to the virtual worship Sunday service on this second Sunday of June. We, whether you are tuning in through our website or you've called in or whether you are watching us later on YouTube or you are tuning in through Facebook. If you are, we ask that you would like click the share button on your, on your Facebook platform so that you're able to share with others, your friends and family on Facebook so that others can have the word of God and worship God, worship, worship our Lord through, um, virtual worship service. We thank you and we are so grateful and so blessed and, and thankful that God has allowed us to see another day to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Our announcements are as follows. On this coming Saturday, June 19th, there will be a Juneteenth celebration. And as we all know, Juneteenth is a time that we reflect and remember and we celebrate the jubilee of being able, when the slaves were told, gotten word that they were freed from with the Emancipation Proclamation two years after it was actually signed and passed. So that celebration will be held on this Saturday, June 19th, from 12 noon to 3 p.m. at the Center of African American Help, uh, Center of African American History, Arts and Culture Center located downtown Aiken at 120 York Street at the Heritage Park. There will be food, crafts, vendors, live music, creative arts, and health screenings as well. So please bring the entire family, bring your friends, and bring lawn chairs. There will be masks are recommended as well as social distancing God, uh, will be practiced. So please come out and celebrate Juneteenth this coming Saturday from 12 noon to 3 p.m. downtown Aiken at the uh, Center of African American History Arts Culture Center. Um, our other announcements are on the fourth sun Sunday of June, we will recognize our Friendship Baptist Church uh, students for all of those that are in um, elementary, middle, and high school with their accomplishments and their awards. All parents or guardians are asked to get their information to me by Wednesday, June 16th, so that we're able to compile their, their awards and accomplishments and recognize them on the fourth Sunday of this month. There's a flyer with the email address and the information to make sure that you submit that, as well as on our Facebook page will be an announcement as well. So please make sure that you get that in by this Wednesday so that we are able to uh, um, compile it all for recognizing our students after their hard work for the, for the year of 2020-2021 school year. There are thank you. We have a thank you announcement from the family of Sherman Hickson and the passing of his brother. The family would like to thank all that that showed acts of kindness, whether it was through cards or phone calls or other acts of kindness. They are greatly appreciate um, what you show them during their time of grief. I would also like to thank the Friendship Baptist Church Children's Ministry for, recon for recognizing and surprising me with um, recognition. I don't consider it to be a job. I consider it to be what the Lord has blessed me with, able to do, but for um, Children's Church for providing the Children's Church lessons on Sunday. Please make sure that we stay encouraged and we encourage everyone and that we just give love and show love to everyone. There's a lot going on within our um, community. There's a lot going on in our church. 
and around the world. And we just give a phone call, drop a note in the mail or a card, just keep continue to keep each other lifted up in prayer. Have a great week, friendship. Good morning. Today is June 13th, 2021, and we're continuing with our summer quarter of the International Sunday School Lessons, and this quarter's title is Confident Hope. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for today's lesson by going to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to venture through your word, to learn your will for our lives. Please help us learn to be still and know that you are God, who is powerful and wise enough to carry us through any storm that arises in our lives. May this knowledge calm us and help us to always trust you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's lesson is a familiar text. It is one of those New Testament stories where we see Christ both as human and God. Today's text comes from Matthew, the eighth chapter, and it's entitled, Why Are You Afraid? It's divided into two sections, the peaceful Savior, Matthew 8, verses 23 through 24, section two, the panicked sailors, Matthew 8, verses 25 through 27. At this point in Christ's ministry, he is well known in the region for his teachings and the many miracles he performed. His disciples have been with him long enough to know that Christ was no ordinary religious leader. In today's text, they're going to find uh, and be find out and be baffled about how extraordinary their leader and teacher really is. Accounts of this story can be found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. To the lesson. Section 1, The Peaceful Savior, verses 23 and 24. When he got into the boat and his disciples followed him, suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. In this story, Christ had been teaching and healing all over the region, and we find in um, early on in chapter 8, um, Matthew uh talks about how Christ healed a man with leprosy, how he, from a distance, spoke, and the servant of a centurion was healed. And in this chapter early on, we find that Matthew um, tells us how Christ healed um, Paul, um, Peter's mother-in-law. Mark and Luke talks about the parables uh, that um, Christ taught. Christ had a very busy schedule. Christ was God in the flesh so that he was probably exhausted at the end of this day. And so that evening he told his disciples, as recorded in Mark, the fourth chapter, let us go to the other side. He wanted to leave the crowd behind, and that is likely why he, why he went to the lower uh, section of the boat to rest, and he fell asleep. Things were calm at first. Then suddenly, a storm began to rage, so much so that the boat began to take on too much water. This really concerned the disciples. That takes us to the second section, the panicked sailors, verses 25 and 20, um, through 27. The disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are, dr we are going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Several of the disciples were seasoned fishermen. They were familiar with the storms, how, and you know, how they could suddenly come upon the lake. You see the mountains located around the lake and the downward flow of the Jordan River that supplied the lake with water, uh, they would, it would form, um, a, create a natural funnel. And so that became a violent storm 
when the flows from the wind uh, from the mountain would come down into that funnel. The volatility of this storm frightened even the seasoned fishermen to the point that they knew if Christ didn't get up and form one of those miracles like he had been doing in the region, they were all going to drown. Christ got up, rebuked them by telling them they had such little faith, and why were they afraid? Now, think about it. Um, they had witnessed Christ perform miracles of healing, of driving out demons, transforming lives. And besides, Christ had just told them on the other side, let us go to the other side. If Christ said it, that should have kind of reminded them that they were going to make it. But you know what? Just as we are now, it's so easy to forget what God has done for us in the past especially during those chapters in our lives when we were frightened because there was just no easy answer. But you know what? We trusted, and those bills got paid. We, somebody found a job just in the nick of time. Good health was restored. A wayward child came to his or her senses. So, you know, focusing on fear causes us to lose hope and faith, just as the disciples did in today's lesson. Their fears turned to amazement, though. Christ rebuked the wind and waves, and even they obeyed. This sudden calm that uh, Christ created when he quieted the tempest caused them to wonder, what manner of man is this that even nature obeys him? We know that that happened so that the disciples would know that he was God's son and could record it so we would know who Christ really is. When a storm uh, of life presses upon us, it's hard, and it's hard not to be fearful at first. We are human with frailties, so the first reaction might be fear or anxiety. But when we belong to God, we take a deep breath, go to him in prayer, and we seem to sense him saying, don't be afraid, I'm here. Everything is going to be all right. That brings a calm and tranquility in our beings. The problem may not be solved immediately as in this story, but the peace can come just that swiftly. When we know who Christ is, I ask you, why are you afraid? As with all lessons, there are implications. The first lesson implication, storms will come. I remember as a young child, my mom or my grandmother would always tell us when we'd have some kind of complaint or something, honey, just keep on living. And so we know that as we keep on living, storms will rise. Some suddenly, some we might see on the horizon. Fear can easily envelop us if we allow it. When storms do come, we need to learn to trust and have faith in him. We need to give him our fears and our concerns. It may require an immediate response that only God, only God can solve. But there's another option, you know, or he may want us to utilize those skills and talents, abilities and gifts and resources that he so richly blessed us with to calm our storms. Either way, we must trust and have faith in him while obeying his will that is found in his word. The second implication, we are human and might experience fear. Even though the disciples were close to Christ and knew a lot about him, it took time and experience to learn the gravity of who Christ really was, and for us, who he really is. So, as it was with them, when things seemed, seemed out of control, fear might be the first emotion to, we, that uh, we experience. That doesn't mean that we don't trust him, or don't know him, or we lack faith. It means we're human, and know when a problem is too difficult for us to solve, we know who to go to, just as the disciples knew who to take their problems to. That wisdom should expel our fears. My question, why are we afraid? 
when we serve a God who knows what we need before we ask and who is always with us until the end of the world. With God, there is hope, and we don't have to fear when he is near. Have a great week, and may God bless you with the peace that passes all understanding. Happy Sunday, Children's Church. Today's lesson is Jesus Walks on Water, and it's coming from the uh, New Testament, Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 31st verse. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And we will talk about that verse a little bit towards the end of the lesson. Has there ever been a time in your life when you needed someone to give you a helping hand? I'm sure we all can name times with you as being children um, 12 and under. You have needed help with tying your shoes. You needed help with putting on your clothes. You might need to reach something in the kitchen that you couldn't reach. It was a little, um, a little bit too high for you. Or maybe riding your bicycle for the first time. Or you needed some help with um, playing sports or some homework help or things like that. You've always had to look for someone, your parents or your siblings or a friend or a classmate to help you along the way. And that's how it is. And sometimes when you, when you grow up, well, it's not a, sometimes, it's a lot of times that you still need help. You still need a helping hand. And that's what happened with the, with the disciples. One of the disciples, Simon Peter, um, needed a helping hand. And it had been a very long, hard day. Uh, for Jesus and his disciples. He, the disciples, which are Jesus' helpers, helped Jesus feed more than 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. I'm sure you're familiar with the story. And he told them to go get in their boat and to go ahead of him on the other side of the lake. So Jesus went up the mountainside. He went alone to pray while they were on the other side of the lake. Later that evening, the disciples were quite far out in the lake and the wind began to blow and the waves began to rock the boat to and fro. So a storm was coming, kind of like the storms that we see in the afternoon on, on these um, warm summer days. So shortly before it was about to become morning, Jesus went out to the disciples walking on the water. And when the disciples saw them, him, they were terrified and scared because... For one, it was early in the morning, so they didn't know. They weren't sure if their eyes were seeing what they thought they saw, and they thought it was a ghost, and they, and they cried out. And so Jesus, immediately seeing how they were, he immediately reassured them and spoke to them, saying, Do not be afraid. Take courage. I am here. So Peter says, Simon Peter says, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come walk to you walking across the water. Jesus answered, Yes, come. So Peter got out of the boat and he started walking on the water towards Jesus. But when he started looking around and seeing that the waves, saw the waves being blown about by the wind, he started to get afraid and he cried out, Lord, save me. He cried and Jesus reached out his hand and, and caught Peter and said, why did you doubt? Is what Jesus asked. So see, even a grown-up and experienced fisherman like Simon Peter needed a hand from Jesus as he was walking on the water. And that's how it will be whether you are 12 and under or whether you are in your 30s or whether you're in your 50s or 60s and 70s. You're going to experience um, some pretty rough times where things seem shaky and things seem like impossible. But as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus and always know that he will still reach out there and give you a helping hand. And let's close out in prayer. Father, help us to remember that you are always there with us, no matter when, no matter what is going on and what we need. You are always have a helping hand and help us to remember to reach our hand out to you. You are there to help us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
step out into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent Oh,
Good morning. Welcome to another uh, virtual worship here at the Friendship Baptist Church. It's my prayer that the Lord has been blessing each and every one of you. And I know he's blessing all of us because we're experiencing a day that we've never seen before and a day that we shall never see again. If you have your Bibles and all believers should have a Bible, turn with me to the book of Colossians, chapter number one. I shall be reading verses 24 through 29. And I'm going to be reading the New Living Translations of the Scriptures. And it reads, beginning at verse 24, I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in their relationship to Christ. And verse 29 says, that's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. And the focus verse of the text will be verse 29. That's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. And this morning, as I share with you a word from the Lord, I want to use as a subject of thought, divine energy, divine energy. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a major effect on all of our lives. I don't think you can find anybody who can say that they have not 
been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of us are facing challenges that can be stressful, overwhelming, and cause strong emotions. During this pandemic, health, public health officials advised us to practice social distancing, which was necessary to help reduce the spread of COVID-19. However, social distancing and isolation can make us feel so lonely and can increase stress and anxiety within. You see, stress levels, I believe, increased in most folks without many really realizing it, that it was actually happening to them. You see, learning how to cope with stress in a healthy way uh, will make you, the people you care about, and those around you to become more uh, resistant to stress itself. You see, stress can cause many things. Stress can cause feelings of fear, anger, sadness, worry, numbness, or frustration. A stress can cause uh, changes in appetite, energy level, desires, and interests. Stress uh, can can cause uh, difficulty in concentrating and making decisions. It can cause uh, difficulty in sleeping. And some folks have even stressed, I mean, have expressed how they've even had nightmares. Um, stress um, can cause physical reactions such as headaches, body pains, stomach problems, and for some, skin rashes. You see, stress, stress if not dealt with well or handled well, uh, can cause worsening of a chronic health problem that one may have. It can worsen one's mental health condition. Uh, it can cause some folks to have increased use of tobacco, alcohol, and other substances that may not be good for the body. Yes, I believe it is natural to feel stress, anxiety, grief, and worrying during this COVID-19 pandemic. Stress will not only affect your mental and physical life, it can negatively affect your spiritual life. That's right, your spiritual walk with the Lord can be affected by this stress. Think about it, people, we're living in stressful times. All we hear is bad news, not much good news. We hear of all the ugliness that's going on in the world. Uh, we hear of all the bad things. People seem to be exhausted everywhere you look. These stressful times have drained many of us of the energy we need to meet the demands of life. You see, on my job, I see many, many people drinking energy drinks, and, and you all have seen it. Energy drinks uh, are everywhere. Exhaustion is, is so widespread that energy drinks, uh, energy drinks now are a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States alone. People are drained searching for an energy source or boost. They are drinking various energy, energy drinks like Red Bull, and you see them everywhere. Monster energy, bang energy, Red Bull sugar-free, Monster Ultra, just to name a few. Energy drinks are everywhere. When people are tired, stressed, and burned out, they cannot function at their best. In society today, we are challenged in all areas of life. And these challenges can produce stress. When you cannot function at your best, it is very difficult to give God your best. I, I'm going to repeat that. When, when you cannot function at your best, it is very difficult to give God your best. You see, when, when we're stressed, it can zap your energy. Anybody ever, ever felt that way, that, that your energy has just left, it's gone? Now, it can delete our get up and go attitude. It can make it difficult to, to do the task in life you have been called to do, whether, whether it's to, 
to, to, to just have some pleasure time. Burn out, no energy, that you can't even have pleasure. Whether it's uh, to do your daily work or to go to work. And whether it be to serve God. You see, we often hear people say things like, I'm tired. <laughs> you ever said that? I'm drained. I'm whipped. I'm beat. I'm just overwhelmed. Yes, where can you find the energy you need to go and do what God has called you to do in a stress-filled world? Well, my friends, this morning we can find the answer to this question in our sermon text. When we look at this text, the background, the author is the Apostle Paul, and he writes to the believers in Colossus to combat a false teaching in the Colossian church, which was similar, this false teaching, to Gnosticism. Gnosticism, it insisted that important secret knowledge has been hidden from most believers. In other words, secret knowledge uh, has been hidden and most believers didn't have the ability to know or to come to understand that knowledge. It taught that the body was evil. There's nothing good about the body. The entire body was evil. It, it contended that Christ only seemed to be human, but was not. That he, he, he never walked physically in the flesh. So Paul had a challenge. Paul had a task as he went about evangelizing. But what do we know about Paul? Well, well, we know that Paul's call to ministry came during his Damascus Road experience because Paul didn't always walk with the Lord. <coughs> Paul was not always a servant of God. No, 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 Paul, 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 at one point he, he believed in God, but he didn't believe in Jesus Christ until he had his Damascus Road experience. Paul accepted his call on that Damascus Road and became a servant of the Lord. Paul's missionary work was not easy work. No, he was met with opposition. Paul labored and struggled in his ministry. Paul was not able to do ministry within himself alone. Paul constantly had to handle uh, continuous challenges on his missionary journeys. No, Paul needed help. So let us see where Paul's help comes from. He tells us in the text. So let us walk through this text this morning. In verse 24, we'll start there. It says, I, I am glad when I suffer for you in my body. For I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. Notice Paul, he's, his motivation for his suffering was that they would benefit the church, the people of God. But moreover, he lets it be known that he participates in the suffering of Christ. So if, if Christ had to suffer, what about you, you and I? Paul, Paul was sold out in his walk with the Lord. And while sitting in prison in Rome and suffering for his faith, Paul was able to rejoice while writing this letter. Notice he says in verse 25, God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. Paul wanted the believers to be filled with what was necessary for their spiritual development, and that includes suffering. I know some of us, we don't want to suffer, but I'm here to tell you that suffering is a part of this journey, and that suffering helped mold us and shape us in our walk with Christ. Yes, if Christ had to suffer, what about you and I? Here, Paul, Paul refers to himself as a servant of God. With a, with a responsibility to preach God's word in its entirety. And not, not part of the word, not some of the word, but Paul says I'm, I'm to preach and share the entire message of the word. Huh? Yes. Goes on to say in verse 26, this message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. You see, God's people, 
needed to be exposed to the mystery. What is this mystery? This, this, this mystery that he's referring to, this mystery that, that, that he, 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 he talks about. You see, the mystery that Christ indwells in every true believer. Because you got to remember now, Gnosticists didn't believe uh, that the body, anything could be good about the body, and that the body was evil. And because the body was evil, in their minds, no way, no way could the Messiah walk in a human flesh. No way could he have been physically walking in the body. Yeah, this mystery, this mystery that Christ indwells every true believer. The spirit of Christ lives in us, walks with us, talks with us. This mystery is available huh, to all believers, Jews or Gentiles. It didn't matter. Huh? As long as you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This mystery of Christ indwelling in us. Right, was available to all. He says in verse 27, for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. Yes. Wanted them to know <clears throat> that the glory of Christ Hmm? It was for the Gentiles as well. It wasn't just for the Jews, but it was for all who believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this secret that Christ lives in you and because he lives in you. Gives you that blessed assurance, assurance of sharing in his glory. And as Christ lives in them, they increasingly would reflect his character, his conduct, his attitude and actions as they use God's word to deal with with the issues of life. Yes, if Christ lives in you, if the spirit of Christ truly dwells in us, it'll be reflected in our character. It's gonna be reflected in our conduct. It's gonna be reflected in our behavior. It's gonna be reflected in our attitude if the spirit of Christ truly lives in you. Verse 28 says, so we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present to them God perfect in their relationship to Christ. <clears throat> Here Paul states, notice, he, he, he goes to the word we. He wanted to include co-workers. He had some co-workers who was along with him. Paul didn't do it all by himself, but there were others. And not only the co-workers that served, the Colossians church. But he closes out in verse 29, which is the focus verse. He says, that's why I work and struggle so hard. Notice what he says, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Paul makes it clear here that, that he cannot do this ministry of evangelizing God's people all on his own. <coughs> he can't do it in his own might. He declares that, that often he works and struggles hard in doing what God called him to do. Yeah, you've got to understand that any time you serve God's people, you see, serving God's people is not always easy. Serving God's people can be difficult sometimes. Serving God's people can place a burden of weight on your shoulders. Uh, serving God's people can get ugly sometimes. Serving God's people can sometimes make you want to quit and throw in the towel. Yes, serving God's people, you can't do it in your own might. You can't do it in just who you are. You can't do it in your own knowledge. You can't do it in your own physical being. Paul makes it clear where his help comes from. He says, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Uh, Paul declares there's something that works on the inside, that works his way to the outside, that allows him to feel like going on when he doesn't want to go on. Yeah, there's something on the inside. Yeah, that will motivate him in times when he didn't feel like going on. And it is the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Spirit performs a variety of functions in everyday life. 
Uh, that, that there are three major truths about the works of the Holy Spirit, but there are many. But there are three that I, I just want to share with you this morning. First of all, the Holy Spirit uh, reminds us of truth. Right there in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sending in my name, will, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Right there in the word what the spirit does for us not only not only does it remind us of truth but it, it, it shapes our character right there in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 through 18 notice what the word says so so i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not uh, to be whatever you want. But if you are led, notice what it says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Right there, the text lets us know that the Spirit will help shape our character. That's why if the Spirit lives in us and we allow the Spirit to work within us, our lives will be changed. The third thing is that the, the Spirit helps us to pray. Romans 8, 26 says in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Uh, we do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us huh? through, through wordless groans. Yes, I've heard people say, I, I want to pray, but I really don't know how to pray. But I'm here to tell you that if the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, you allow the Spirit to grow and have his way. Yeah, the Spirit will help you say what you need to say. Yeah, Paul's energy, Paul's energy was supernatural and it came through the indwelling of the Spirit of God. And it enabled him to do God's will in stressful situations. You see, at the core of his being, Paul operated under the power of the Holy Spirit, relying, relying on the Holy Spirit to fuel his every action. In other words, Paul, Paul operated under divine energy. Anybody in here got divine energy? Yeah, divine energy comes from the Holy Spirit. Because you see, it is the Spirit, yeah, that empowers me. It's the Spirit that energizes me. It is the Spirit that moves me. It's the Spirit that uh, puts the spring in my step when I, when I want to slow down. It's, it's the Spirit that tells me to go ahead when I want to turn around. It's the Spirit that whispers every now and then to hang on in there. Yeah, it's the Holy Spirit that reminds me of Brother Job. Brother Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I'm going to wait until my change comes. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is the divine energy that moves in all believers. That divine energy that only comes from the Lord. Yes, God's Spirit energizes all believers so that we can do God's will anywhere and at any time. Yes, this is divine energy. You can't pay for it. You can't buy it. You won't find it in Duke's energy. You won't find it with Georgia Power. You can't find it in Plant Vogue. Well, where, where, where can we get this energy? Where, where does this divine energy, where can it be found? How can I have it? It, it comes come through God, through his son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died on a hill called Calvary, was buried in a borrowed tomb one Friday, but three days later, early one great Sunday morning, got up with all power, and trust it in his hand. You accept Christ. Believe that he died for your sins. Believe that he's buried. <laughs> believe that he lived. Not only, not only are you saved, but you're empowered with divine energy that comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I like what Paul says. You need to read this. You need to study it well. Hmm? Matter of fact, read the entire chapter. Right there in that last part of verse 29. 29 29b says, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's divine energy. Paul makes it clear. I couldn't do what I'm doing with all the struggles that I have, with all the stress that I, that I deal with and all that I've gone through. I'm, I'm only to, able to do it depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Yeah, you... You're struggling with doing God's will. You need to do a spiritual checkup. Is the Holy Spirit rest ruling and abiding in you? Are you allowing it to grow? And as we grow in God's word, the spirit grows. 
And as the spirit man grows, the carnal man gets smaller. The spirit man gets bigger. And let the Holy Spirit have its way in your life. Yeah, Paul. Paul says it's, it's Christ's mighty power that works within me. He says right there. He says, I, I work and I struggle so hard. Anybody been working and struggling? Anybody been having a hard time? Don't throw in the towel. Lean and trust on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the works of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you've been watching and you've yet to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's my prayer that this day, because I say it everywhere I go, I say it all the time, every day that he allows you and I to get up, he's given us an opportunity to get it right. Because tonight is not promised to us. Tomorrow is not promised to us. But he's given us today. And once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as always, we recommend that you would connect with a Bible teaching and believing church, a body of believers. Not a building, but a body of believers who will help you grow. And that, that spirit man, the Holy Spirit, will grow in you. If you're interested in joining us here at the Friendship Church, give us a call. 803-648-9290. Again, thank you for tuning in. We pray that you've been blessed by the word. Pray that you will go back, read the entire uh, chapter one of Colossians and see how Paul makes it clear. He said, I worked hard and I struggled. Mm -hmm. But I was able to do it because I depended and leaned on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us uh, to assemble, <clears throat> whether it be through virtual worship, whether it be on the phone line, God, we, we thank you. And now, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to rest, rule, and abide in all of us and grow in us, that we'll be able to do a mighty works, even in a stressful world, in a stressful time like this. Now, as we depart from this place, but never ever from your presence, give each and every one of us traveling grace, Father God, that we'll be able to go out and do all that you call us to do. And do it safely. In Jesus' name, amen.
Oh!